is nasty, we'll have it here. But otherwise, we're going to probably be at the park at the newest pavilion there. Uh, before, when you turn in to go to the pool, it's that first one right there on your right, right next to where they do the farmers market on Friday mornings. Oh, wait. So if you're looking forward to that, it'll be at 6:30 p.m. Bring something to share. Bring someone to share it with. We'll have a lot of fun. It'll be good, safe. Food and fellowship all in one okay. place. Hallelujah. So we're looking forward to that. At this point in time, we're going to return to praise and worship. So if you'd like to join us again, we're going to sing another song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to raise a hallelujah. Amen. 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 No matter what's going on out there. You'll sing to the Lord, hallelujah. It'll be a weapon in your mouth, amen, against the plots and the plans of the enemy, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I raise a hallelujah.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. At this time, pastors got to come and uh, receive our tithes and offerings. So let's welcome pastor. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You can be seated. Hallelujah. Y'all blessed this morning? Amen. Yeah. We're glad you're here. Yeah. How many were privileged to go to our FCF relational gathering up in Bloomington uh, this past weekend? Was that not an awesome time? Yeah. I mean, Mama Pat was on fire, wasn't she? And she's an awesome woman of God, talking about staying focused and not getting distracted. Very easy to do, amen, you know, to get distracted, praise God. Um, before we receive the offering, somebody's having a birthday today. And uh, she's up on the platform, she's behind the keyboard. And uh, so it would be fitting, I believe, if we sang happy birthday to Rosie Carter. So let's stand back up, please, we do that. And um, Lisa will lead us. And singing happy birthday to our sister. Amen. Praise God. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rosha. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And uh, we just appreciate uh, all of her hard work and diligence uh, around here. Amen. She makes my job a whole lot easier. We want to honor her today on her birthday. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, turn with me, if you would please, to the book of Galatians, uh, chapter 6. The book of Galatians, chapter 6. And uh, let's begin reading in verse 6. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 6. It says, Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him or share with him that teacheth in all good things. So it's a biblical principle that when you're being blessed, by the word of God, that you sow a seed into that ministry. Amen? As the person that is sowing God's word into your heart, and you're appreciative of it, then in return, uh, you sow of your material substance into their ministry. Are you following? So in other words, you're being fed the word of God this morning. Amen? And so, um, in your appreciation of that, then you sow a seed. But now notice what happens when you do that. It says, be not deceived. Say, be not deceived. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You ever heard someone say, almost, they do it almost ignorantly? Being ignorant is different than being stupid. Being ignorant means you just didn't know. Amen? If somebody is ignorant of God's truth, it's always for one or two reasons. Always. Either, number one, they were taught wrong. I don't know if you're taught wrong, you're going to be ignorant of certain things. Yeah. Right? Or number two, they weren't taught at all. Now, Somebody that's stupid, and nobody here is like that, amen, is someone that knows better, but they do it anyway. They've been taught better, but they do it anyway. Well, thank God nobody here is like that. <coughs> amen. amen? We're all doers of God's word in this place, amen? amen. Say, I'm a doer of God's word, not a hearer only. See that? <laughs> so, somebody says, well, I don't really sow a seed, I don't really give in the kingdom to get anything back. Well, it says here that you're mocking God then. It says here that you're deceived. Because, why? Paul said, whatever you sow, what are you going to reap? So when somebody says, I don't, I don't believe in that, 
you know, uh, blab it, grab it bunch. I don't believe all that. Well, how about blab it, grab it, receive it? Amen. Well, here's the thing. When somebody says something contrary to what the Word of God says, okay, the Bible says it's to deceive. Whatever you sow, the Bible says, is what you're going to reap. If you sow to the flesh, you're going to of the flesh reap death or corruption. If you sow to the Spirit, in other words, if you sow to the blessing, okay, and you don't give up, you don't quit, say, I don't quit. Say, I'm not a quitter, I'm a winner. Say that. I'm not a quitter, I'm a winner. Then you've got a harvest coming. Amen. Well, don't say something contrary to that and, and block your harvest. That's right. See, speaking words of doubt and belief are blessing blockers. Murmuring and complaining are blessing blockers. Don't murmur and complain about anything. If you complain, you'll remain. If you doubt, you'll do without. So don't be a complainer. Amen. Even about the weather, just don't complain. Amen. Just zip it. <laughs> if you can't say something positive, then just zip it. Why? Because loose lips sink ships. Amen? Your ship is going down when you talk that way. Yeah. See, I'm a positive person. I am a positive person. I speak positive faith words. I speak positive All faith the time. Say that. All the time. You know, according to Mama Pat, that's Dr. Pat Harrison, when somebody is speaking negative, that is almost like slapping Jesus in the face. As though his death, burial, and resurrection was all in vain. See, I'm not going to do that. Say that. I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to speak faith words. I speak faith I'm words. Gonna, I'm going to speak words. Say that. They align with God's word. Align with God's word. And I notice. Now notice here. Notice here. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Every seed reproduces after its own kind. You can't plant an orange tree, an orange tree, and expect peaches to come up. No. You can't plant tomatoes and expect beans. Every, every seed. Every seed reproduces after its own kind. You're going to reap whatever you sow. Right. What happens if you sow financial seed into the kingdom? What's, what's going to happen? Financial budgets. Now, this works um, Thursday. We got a check in the mail. And uh, I thought, Tracy said, did you see this? And I said, what? She opened the mail. She said, we got a check. I said, a check. I said, how much? She told me. And I said, you got to be kidding. And she said, no, look. So I read it. I said, wow. I said, that's the blessing of the Lord. Okay. Well, she wasn't so sure about it. I could tell by looking at her, she didn't have peace about it. And so um, she said, don't, don't catch it just yet. So she did some investigating. Okay? Made a phone call. And then I get back from doing my running my errands, you know, and everything. And she wrote a note to me, and the note said, after investigating and making a phone call, she said, I found out that this check is legit. Lord, ain't supposed to get it. I can't explain it. It's just simply the blessing of the Lord. Amen? Yeah. All we do is simply believe and so. Amen? We're simply believing and so on, believing and so on, believing and so on. If you want an uncommon harvest, then you're going to have to sow an uncommon seed. You can't expect to receive an uncommon harvest without sowing an uncommon seed. But here's the thing. Whenever I tithe and give, I don't just plunk it in the offering plate or in the basket back there. 
I spend time worshiping God over it. I have brochures to make copies of all the checks that go out to different ministries that this church supports. I mean, we, we tithe before I even get a paycheck. We give offerings before I even get a paycheck. We practice what we preach around right here. And uh, see, now I, I pray over those checks and, and worship God over it and, and, I, and, I, and I bless them. And then it just comes back. I say, it just comes back. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. For he that soweth to his, verse 8, to his flesh, shall the flesh reap death or corruption. He that soweth to the spirit, or sows to the blessing, shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. That is the abundant life. Verse 9 says, And let us not be worried in well doing, for in due season we shall reap. Say, I shall reap. I shall reap. If we faint not, say, If I faint not. Now see that right there is admonishing you to stay in your ground until your harvest comes in, praise God. In other words, don't give up what you sow, what you're going to reap. Don't let the devil steal your harvest, praise God. Amen. 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 This is awesome. Say this, say, say God's word works. God's word works. Say, my faith is working. My faith is working. Say, my prayers are working. My prayers are working. Somebody say, well, my prayers never get answered. No, and never will leave until you change your confession. Right. Well, God never talks to me. He's always talking to you. It's just that you aren't listening. Right. He's trying to lead you out of some things. Are you listening to him? Are you focusing in on what he said to you? Or are you focusing in on, on the circumstance that you're in? No, don't do that. Don't let your circumstance distract you from what God has said to you. Amen. Father, we thank you for the privilege and for the opportunity to come before you this morning with our seed in our hand. We thank you, Father, for it. We worship you with it. We claim the return on it. We thank you for our harvest of righteousness in the name of Jesus. And we've taken our stand on the word of God. And we thank you for the abundant life. That Jesus came to give. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said. Amen. Amen. So now, in the service, now there's a basket at the rear of the text where you can sort of see on the way out or your tithe or on your way out. Amen. And uh, and sow to the blessing, tithe to the blessing, and expect a harvest from the seed you sow, from the, from the tithe that you have brought to the Lord. You don't pay your tithe, you bring your tithe. Amen. As you bring your tithe. Amen. And we don't take offerings in this place. We receive your offering. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't go anywhere. Because when I come back, we'll preach to you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to sing another song. Would you like to stand? Or you like to hop on the computer? I want to turn the volume up a little bit, guys. Thank you. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. All my days, I've been here.
churches this city, for all the pastors this city, upon this region, and upon this nation. Let the world see, Father, a demonstration, a display, if you will, of your goodness and of your power to this generation, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you for your goodness that's being poured out even upon the Oval Office. Upon the Supreme Court. Upon the Senate. The House. The representatives. Upon those who head up for states. The governors. Those who are in authority in our cities, Lord. Thank you for your goodness that's flowing through them. Yes. As they make decisions and pass laws, pass legislation that align with your righteousness, you, with your holiness, with your word, with your plan, with your purposes. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody that agree, agree with that said, Amen. 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 You may be seated. Thank you, Liberty <coughs> Worship Team. Give them a hand clap, please, as they come down on the back door. Let's go ahead and take a seat. Amen. And uh, open your Bibles, please, to the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 16. The Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 16. Praise God. Somebody said, Praise God. Praise God. God. Hallelujah. Mark, chapter 16. Now, Jesus here has already gone to the cross. He's been raised from the dead. He's appeared to the disciples. And in verse 15, he gives them these instructions. He said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Say, preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Amen. You know the word gospel means good news. Goodness. goodness. Somebody say goodness. Goodness. That's the literal Greek rendering of the word gospel. So Jesus said, go to all the world and preach God's goodness. Say God's goodness. God's goodness. To every creature, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils. Or demons who say today. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And they drink any deadly thing. And shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands upon the sick. And they shall what? Recover. They shall recover. Amen. Verse 19. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven. This is referring to the ascension. And sat on the right hand of of God. Verse 20. And they went forth. Said they went forth. They went forth. They went forth and they preached everywhere. Said they preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming what? The word. Confirming the word with signs following. Then it says amen. So the Holy Spirit's job is to confirm the word with signs following. Amen. The Holy Spirit cannot confirm worry. Hello. Yeah. The Holy Spirit does not confirm religion, tradition, and customs. That's not what he came to confirm. He's here to confirm the word. Say he's here to confirm the word. He's here, he's here to confirm the word. He's here right now in the midst of us this morning. And he's here to confirm the word. So guess what? If we'll preach the word in this place. That's right. That's right. If we'll preach God's goodness. Yes. If we'll preach the blessing. Yes. If we'll preach healing. If we'll preach deliverance. If we'll preach how good God is. If we'll preach he's to deliver. Guess what? He's going to do what we preach in this place. He's going to confirm what we preach in this place. Praise amen. God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I hear an amen? Amen. amen. Glory to God. So, our job, my job, is simply to preach the word. 
My job is not to get you to do this stuff. I am not going to take that kind of pressure on. If he took it, you do it. That's not my job. That's not, I'm your shepherd. My job is to feed you. You know, Dr. A. Friend, he's in heaven now. He had a vision. Years where he went home to be with the Lord. And Jesus appeared to him in his vision. He took him to heaven. He talked to him about pastors. And the thing that Jesus said about pastors is this. Pastors are feeders. What he said about pastors? Jesus said, pastors are feeders. That means they feed you the word of God. My job is not to get you to do this stuff. I want you to do it. It's to your advantage. It's to your better advantage. And your advantage if you do it. But my job is simply just to feed you. And then love on you. It's the Holy Spirit's job to nudge you to try to lead you to do this stuff. But this morning, praise God, we are going to believe God together for the Holy Spirit who's in our midst to demonstrate and to confirm what we preach and teach, praise God. Amen. I expect breakthroughs to happen. Yes. I expect miracles to happen. Okay. Amen. 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 Just like that check we got Thursday, we weren't really even expecting that. Or at least not from where it came from. I mean, God's our source. Yes. You understand that? Many channels. <clears throat> the blessing will only work if you look to God alone as your source. You can't try to figure out how he's going to do it or who he may choose to use. You can't, you, that'll stop the blessing every time. You have to keep your eyes on Jesus. You have to look to God as your source. And it didn't make any sense that we got the check. Didn't make, I still understand it. Teresa wrote, wrote a note and said, I checked it out, investigated it, made a phone call. It's legit. You don't understand it. Just, all I can say is praise the Lord. <laughs> I mean, that's all you can say is praise, praise the Lord. Amen? Praise the Lord. Now we're expecting the blessing, but not for it to come from the channel that it came through. Are you following me there? Okay, now go up in place to the book of, of Galatians. Uh, chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. We've been talking about the blessing and uh, we're going to continue in that vein again this morning. Because faith comes out and faith does not come by having heard. You understand that? Faith comes by hearing, and by hearing the word of God. That's how faith comes. Amen. So you don't get it because you have heard it. You have to keep hearing it. That's right. Amen. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 says, Christ, or the anointed one, hath redeemed us. See, the word hath, there's past tense, so it's already happened. Amen. Hath redeemed us. From the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham, say the blessing of Abraham, the blessing of Abraham, or in other words, so that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Well, that's you and me. Amen. If you're not a Jew, then you're a Gentile. Amen. That the, that the blessing of Abraham might come on you and me through Jesus Christ, say through Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith, or in other words, we might receive what the Spirit promised Abraham through faith. So, whatever God promised Abraham belongs to you, belongs to me, through Christ Jesus. Amen? And those again it says that Christ has already redeemed us from the curse of the law. He's already done that. Amen? The curse came upon the earth when Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden. 
Before Adam sinned, there was no sickness. There's no disease. There's no lack. There's no poverty. There are, there are no demons or devils. I mean, Satan was, was roaming around, but he had no authority. He had no power until Adam sinned and gave his authority away. And Jesus came and got it back. Amen. Jesus bought us back. Hallelujah. See, see the word um, uh, redemption means to repurchase. It means we've been bought back. We've been redeemed. Are you, are, aren't you thankful for that? Amen. Amen. Now, this here is the reason why Jesus came, even though it's almost never preached. That's really, really sad, almost. But this tells us right here why Jesus came. Graduate churches teach this. We go here in this church. Because it's in the Word of God. I want to say the Word of God. Is that okay with you? But we say the Word of God. Yes. Amen. Jesus came, according to this verse, Jesus came to reverse the curse. Amen. That's why he came. To reverse the curse. So Jesus came to reverse the curse. Jesus came to reverse the curse. Now, how many of you know that you can know all about God but not know Him? How many of you know you can hear all about salvation but never get saved? How many know that? Until you believe and act, then you aren't saved. Isn't that right? Well, the same thing is true with redemption. So I'm trying to help you see something. Before the end of the service, some of you are going to get this. So you have to get it. Turn your neighbor and say, this morning you're going to get it. This morning you're going to get it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You can know all about redemption, but never know what really belongs to you. I mean, you know in your head. So you can know about certain scriptures. Even be able to quote them. Doesn't mean you, it does not mean you know the author, though. That does not mean that you know what really happened. That does not mean that you're appropriating what belongs to you. Are you listening to me this morning? So, we can't just know about redemption. We have to know what belongs to us. Did you know that for someone to come out of lack, they have to change their mindset. Did you know that? You'll never come out of lack until you change your mindset. Because somebody that's that been raised in a home where there was lack, where there was all kinds of negativity, until they make a decision to replace those negative thought patterns with positive thought patterns by the renewing of the mind, then to a degree, they're going to continue to experience what they were brought up in. they got to make a decision that no, no, no. Jesus redeemed me from the curse of the law. And these negative thought patterns, these negative fearful thought patterns are coming out of the curse and Jesus redeemed you from the curse of the law and make a decision to renew your mind with what belongs to you in Christ Jesus and begin to focus in on that and your mindsets will change and so will your circumstances. But your mindsets have got to change first before your circumstance can change. You've got to see your way out before God can lead you out. Amen. Oh my God, that came out of the Holy Ghost. I said, you've got to see your way out before God can lead you out. Amen. You've got to begin to hear the right things. That's why it's important what you let go in your ears, what you let go in your eyes, and what you let come out of your mouth. Go with me, please, to um, Mark's Gospel, the fourth, no, it's Matthew's Gospel. 
This ain't in my notes. I'm deviating. Praise the Lord. By the unction of the Holy Ghost. Matthew chapter 13. Jesus here teaching on the parable of the sower. Okay? Now, your words are seeds. You know that? Your words are seeds. Brother Higgins said like this, any thought that's not acted on will die on board. How do you act on a thought? By saying it. By saying it. Just don't say it. If a negative thought hits your mind, don't speak it out. Choose to sit on it. It'll just die and born. Okay? And so our words are seeds. The Bible likens our finances to seeds. And the word of God, say the word of God. The word of God is the master seed. Amen. Amen. Okay? And so in verse 15, Matthew chapter 13, Jesus said, For well, this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. You see that in your Bible? Verse 6, he said, But blessed are your eyes. He turned right around and spoke the blessing over the disciples. <coughs> he said, blessed are your eyes, for they see, and blessed are your ears, for they hear. So, for God to bring you out, you've got to see your way out. For God to bring you out, you've got to be hearing the right things. Your, 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 your spiritual ears got to have to be tuned in to the voice of God. If you're having all these negative thoughts, these spiritual thoughts. That's not God talking to you. Right. And, and, and your joy is sticking out. God's not talking to you. That's, right. That's the enemy talking to you. You're meditating on the wrong things. See? God wants to bring you out. Because you've got to see yourself coming out. God wants to bring you out. You've got to be hearing the right things. You've got to be hearing the voice of truth. Yes. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. I want you to get some things this morning. This is what's going to cause things to turn around in your life. It will even cause turnarounds in this ministry. We'll get a hold of this. We'll get a hold of this. The, let me, these things come by revelation. You can't just know it in your head and, and then now you got it. No, no. No, no. It doesn't work that way. You have to get serious about living in the blessing. Go to the book of Ephesians chapter 1, please. Ephesians chapter 1. Paul here is praying for the church of Ephesus. And I I pray this over myself every day. I prayed over myself this morning before I ever started praying and preparing for the message, this message. I prayed, over, I prayed this prayer over me and over you. <laughs> praise the Lord. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16 says, Paul here, pray by the unction of the Holy Ghost, says, I see not give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you, and listen, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Say revelation. Revelation. That's a revelation. In the knowledge of him, may the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know. So you have to know some things. You can't just believe it in your head. You have to know some things. Why? When you know it, and you're like Father Abraham, who, who got the place to work. The Bible says he was fully persuaded that what God had said he was able and willing to perform. You have to know some things. Let me very carefully. When you get to the place that 
you get excited about the blessing. Even though your circumstance has not changed yet. But you're all excited about it. People can see it on you. You're real close. You're real close to that blessing coming upon you. So stay with it. Meditate it. Focus in on it. Talk about it. Pray on it. Don't pray with your problems. Come on. Get away from that. That's religion. You don't, you don't want the victor side of life. Not the victim side. You're on the victim, you're a victor. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Praise the Lord. Bring the eyes that you understand and be enlightened, that you may know, know what? That you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. What's your inheritance? Your inheritance is the blessing. But you've got to know it. You can't just think it. You can't just believe it in your head. You have to know it in your heart. Did you know? <laughs> oh, my Lord. It is not the acquisition of knowledge that will put you over in life. It's the application of it. Right? See, that's when you know it. That's when you know it. And Dr. Peter Anthony said there's a huge gap between what we know and what we do. See, if you get to do this stuff, that's when it'll become real in your heart. When you start meditating on the blessing, talking about the blessing, confessing that you're blessed, praying on the fact that you're blessed, they'll become real in your heart. You get to work, you're fully persuaded that what God has said, He's well able and willing to do in your life. Yes. And that's when things start to turn around for you. And supernatural things will start to happen for you. Can you say amen to that? Amen. amen. Now, go me please to John's Gospel, the 8th chapter. John's Gospel, the 8th chapter. Jesus said in verse 31, He said, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know what? The truth. You have to know some things. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Set you free. And shall make you free. Now let's make it to me very carefully. It's not the truth that makes you free. Not what Jesus said at all. He said it's knowing the truth that does. Knowing the truth is what makes you free. As long as you simply have head knowledge of what belongs to you, in other words, you see it in the Bible, but it's not really in your heart yet, <coughs> there's a good chance that somebody's going to come along and talk you out of it. There's a good chance that the devil's going to talk you out of your blessing. You have to desire the blessing. You have to diligently pursue it. You have to persist in your endeavor to receive it and for it to come upon you and for you to live in it. Amen? Amen. You have to get to the place to where you desire that more than anything else. Yes. Well, Pastor, is not becoming materialistic. Listen to me. The blessing is not just about money. The Bible says, the blessing of the Lord can make it rich. And he adds no sorrow with it. The blessing is something that you wear. It's like, it's like putting on a coat. You wear it. It's going to attract the good things of God to you. Yes. And, and it will drive away the things the devil has for you. That's called the blessing. That's right. That's right. Amen. How many of you would just love to be able to bless more people than what you are able to right now. Amen. 
How many would love to be able to give large amounts of money to a missionary that's struggling? Yes. The blessing can produce that for you. That's why God wants you to be blessed is so you can be a blessing. Right. See, you can't have material things on your mind and have the blessing come upon you. Yeah. You have to renew your mind to what the blessing really is in the Word of God. And the fact that Jesus paid for you to have it. It'd be a shame to go through all of life never having tapped into all that belongs to you. Because you were so distracted by other things. You can't be distracted walking this. Come on. I remember I remember hearing Dr. Leroy Johnson say years ago on a tape. Uh, either because that tape or CD, I'm not sure which. He said one of his messages. <laughs> he said this. At the time he said it, I think I even relate to it. He said, he said, I can't even think black. He said, I can't even think broke. He said, if just the thought of black comes into my, into my mind, there, there's, a, there's another force comes in behind it and just pushes it out. I'm thinking, now there's a man who spent a lot of time with God. Yeah. He spent a lot of time meditating on the blessing. The money coming message was produced from the blessing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, you have the blessing that comes upon you, and you have all of God's promises. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. I'm convinced that's the blessing that's caused my increased marriage to be blessed all these many years. The blessing has held us together, praise God. Because when we were dating, it was topsy-turvy. It was up and down. We were, I mean, it was not a good, we, we, we had the biggest fight of our lives the night before we got married, for crying out loud. But by the end of the month, I got saved. And then two years later, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! Amen. And then, Sometime later, a couple years later, God led me to a church in Urbana called New Life Faith Christian Fellowship. He sent me a man of God, and I didn't know at the time, but it has been revealed to me later. He sent me to a man of God to introduce me to the blessing. I didn't even know it. The blessing came upon me through the man of God. I know God, I know the blessing comes from Jesus. But it's released through people. God bestowed the blessing originally upon Abraham. And God gave Abraham dominion over the entire earth. The blessing is on Adam. I'm sorry, Adam. The goes to uh, bless the entire earth. Well, he messed up. He sinned. And the curse came. The blessing went to the curse came. But God found a man who would obey him. God found a man who would believe him. Named Abraham. And now he's got that blessing functioning again. Yeah. Amen. And Abraham blessed Isaac. Isaac blessed Jacob, so on and so forth. Are you listening to me this morning? Yeah. Well, God sent me to new life to sit under a man that was blessed, and that blessing came upon me. Now, where did Pastor Potts get it? He got from Pastor Buddy and Sister Pat Harrison. That's where he got it from. Where did they get it from, Brother Higgy? Where did he get it from, God? Hallelujah. <laughs> you see how this works? See, God will send somebody in your life that has some revelation about these things. And then as you connect to that person, ministry, that same blessing that comes upon you. Yeah. I mean, you don't realize this, but many, many years ago, Brother Paul Roberts laid his hands upon Brother Copa and blessed him. Brother Copa is living in Brother Paul Roberts' blessing. Plus, he sat under Brother Hagen, and so that, that blessing's working. And every person I know of, they got around Brother Hagen, they worked with him for a number of years, if they kept the right heart, if they kept the right attitude, 
That same blessing is upon them. That same blessing is upon Brother Lincoln. It's upon Brother Keith Moore. He's got Brother Lincoln's teaching in the morning. Teaching in the morning. Sister Pat Harrison, Mama Pat, she has Brother Lincoln's prophetic anointing. You listen to me? Amen. That's how this blessing works. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Hang around with this thing because uh, God, look at it. Study the Bible. God always works through authority. That's how he works. That, 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 that's, his, that's his MO, his mode of operation. Amen? Amen. I said amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now the blessing comes from God, but he'll bring somebody in your life that, can, that will impart some things to you. How many were uh, in Bloomington the last couple of days sitting under Mama Pat? Did you receive some things from Mama Pat? Yeah, that blessing is upon her. Did you recognize, did you recognize that? The blessing the is blessing upon her. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when you give me this ministry, you give me that blessing. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I didn't understand all this when I was a new life. I had no, I had no clue about a lot of this stuff. I just knew what to do. I knew what the word of God said. I had no <clears throat> revelation at all. But well, maybe a little bit. And I had a little bit more now, not much more, but a little bit more now. And I knew to submit. I knew to do that. Because God taught me about, about the value and power of submission. I knew to do all that. But I didn't know why I was doing this stuff. But I sure do now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I was cooperating with the blessing. Yes. And thank God I did. Amen. That's why I'm standing before you this morning. All right. Mark chapter 11. This is helping anyone this morning. Are you getting help? Yes. Mark chapter 11. Jesus said in verse 22, he said, Have faith in God. But verily I say unto you, that whosoever, say whosoever. Whosoever. Say I'm a whosoever. I'm a whosoever. Look your neighbor and say, You're a whosoever. You're a whosoever. Say, you, say you whosoever you. That whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have one service said. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when you pray, believe. Say believe. Believe. Believe what? Believe you receive them, and ye shall have them. So, when do you believe? When you pray. When you pray. Or in other words, you believe right now. You believe you receive now, and you shall have that what you pray for. Isn't that right? Now, let's talk a little bit about the favor of God. All right? Favor is part of the blessing. When you have the blessing and favor of God upon you, how I many would love to have that? You can. It belongs to you. When you have the blessing and favor of God upon you, things will happen supernaturally for you. Favor can open doors that no man can close. Favor can change laws, can change rules. Are you listening to me? Yes. When the blessing and favor of God are upon you, no man, no demon, no devil, no evil spirit can stop your success. Hallelujah. You hear that? Amen. Because God is going before you and favor surrounded you. It's behind you. It's all around you. Praise God. Amen. So having said that, you can use that scripture. Verse 24. To receive the blessing and favor of God. Hallelujah. Everybody say this. Say, say this loudly. Say, by faith. By faith. I believe. I, believe. I, receive, I receive the blessing, the blessing and favor of God. Favor of God. Coming upon me Coming upon now. now. For faith is now. For faith is now. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Now shout about it. Hallelujah. 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 Hooray. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. I am expecting 
the blessing of every God, then you release this ministry, and for things that just aren't happening supernaturally. Amen. Amen. In your lives. Thank you. In your life. Amen. Amen. I receive. Thank you, Lord. Believe. Hallelujah. 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 Because the blessing of the Lord and make it rich, and you added no toil with it. In other words, you don't got to figure it out and toil and labor and get all stressed out. Hallelujah. It's possible. In Christ, if you're born again, you're in Christ. It's possible for you to live a curse-free, stress-free, strife-free, blessed life. That's what God wants. And He just paid for you to have it. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. My wife and I just, just don't fight anymore. We just we don't argue anymore. Hardly. We just, we just don't do it. We know we're not doing it. Why, that's the blessing. Yes. Strife is a blessing walker. Yes. Stress is a blessing walker. Okay. Okay. Don't get all stressed out. When stress comes, peace goes. Yes. When the blessing comes, fear goes. When faith comes, fear goes. When the blessing comes, the curse is reversed. Do you see that? Huh? Praise God. Now go with me, please, to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. How many are getting something out of this this morning? Amen. Just shout out to get something out of it. Hallelujah. Praise God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Hallelujah. Verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, how many are in Christ? Amen. He is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Jesus Christ is the blessing. He doesn't have a blessing. He is the blessing. Amen? He's not just blessed. He is the blessing. And if you're in Christ, that means you're in the blessing now. Verse 21. For he hath made him, Jesus, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Christ is the blessing, and you're in him. And the blessing took your sin and gave you his righteousness. Now you need to replace a sin consciousness with a righteousness consciousness and receive the blessing and favor of God coming upon you now in Jesus' mighty name. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 We then, chapter 6, understand that the, when, this, when, it was, when this was written, that there were no chapters and verses. Chapters and verses were put in the privilege of the translators. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he said, verse 2, I have heard thee any time accepted. In the day of salvation have I helped. They say he's helping me. Yeah. Say he's helping me to get this. Behold now. Say behold now. Yeah. Now is the accepted time. Behold now is the day of salvation. Now is the day of your deliverance. Now is the day of your breakthrough. Now is the day where you receive the blessing and favor of God coming upon you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Now go with me please to uh, Psalm 102. Psalm 102. Verse 13 says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her, say the time to favor her. For the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. Hallelujah. I got good news for you. Whatever God promised Abraham, he's promised the same thing to you. Whatever God promised Israel, he's made the same promise to you. Whatever God promised to Zion, he has also made that promise to you because Zion is a type of the church. Hallelujah. Yes. And so the time for you to receive the blessing and favor of God is now, praise God. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Now, last scripture. Go to the book of Numbers, please. Numbers chapter 6. Numbers chapter 6. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Numbers chapter 6. And verse 22 says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, So God's talking to Moses, isn't he? Speak unto Aaron and to his sons, Say it on this wise. 
you shall bless the children of Israel. Say it unto them. Let's stop right there. Notice the protocol. Notice the chain of command. God, well, let's go ahead and, and, and read this, and then we'll come back to that. Verse 24, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace and prosperity. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Hallelujah. So, God gave, originally, the word for word blessing. It's called, we could call this, the spoken blessing. Why? Because the blessing has to be voice activated. Amen. Brother Old Roberts laid his hands upon a Brother Copeland, and he blessed him. He blessed him. And today, Brother Copeland is living. And Brother O. Roberts blessed him. Reverend David Ellis is living in Brother Copeland's blessing. I see it all. I see it all. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Because you wear the blessing. So, God gave originally the word, the word blessing to his servant Moses. Moses then turned around and gave the blessing or released the blessing to Aaron and to his sons. See, that's why it's so important, parents, that you never speak negative words ever, ever about your children. Ever. No matter what they're doing. Right. Never call them brats. Never do that. Never. Don't speak neg negatively around your children. If you do that, especially fathers, if you do that, you just, you just release the curse upon your children. Now, you can repent and change that, but why have to go through all that? Why not just watch your words? Yeah. I don't care what they're doing. You stay with the Word of God while your children are concerned, especially dads. Amen. You have the power and the authority, dads, to bless your children. That's right. Amen. Now, if you don't do it, then the mom can do it. If, if the dad doesn't want to walk in this stuff, then the mom can do it. But it's better if the dad does it because he's in authority. He can lay his hands upon his children and bless them. And God will honor that. He said, God will honor that. Amen. And also honor on your pastor because I'm in authority here. How many know that? I'm the daddy of this ministry. Amen. Pastors are, are a father-like one. They're shepherds. They're, they're father-like one. So, God gave the word for word blessing to the servant Moses. Then Moses turned right around and gave the word for word blessing to Aaron. Say, now you give it to your sons. And guess what? Aaron's sons then release it to the children of Israel. Yeah. Notice a chain of command. Right. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Now, this morning, uh, if you want the blessing, just stand up. <laughs> Just one of the blessings come upon you. When God's going to come upon you, stand up. And um, I'm going to <coughs> speak the blessing over you, word for word, and then I'm going to come around and lay my hands upon you. Okay? I'll tell you what. You just form a line when we're done. Form a line to my left or to your right and come... There's like, there's like when we receive communion, I'll lay my hands upon you. I'm going to speak the blessing for you. I'm going to rebuke the curse. I'm going to see some things happen around right here. Hallelujah. I'm here ready to receive the blessing in the favor of God. Amen. Now, these words are simple, but they're powerful. Just, just believe them. Just simply believe these words. Something's happening in my man's company because I don't, I don't, it's a blessing word. It's not me. I'm giving all the honor to God, man. Woman, I'm, I'm, I'm giving honor to God. It's not me. It's not me at all. But I want to see the, want to see the blessing working in people's lives around here. Yes. I know y'all want to see that. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Just, just close your eyes. Just focus on Jesus. That's where this, that's where it comes from. I'm just simply the channel. I'm simply the conduit. 
that's coming from him. So just keep the focus on him. In the name of Jesus, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. The Lord make up his countenance upon you and give you peace and prosperity. And the Lord shall put his name upon you. And he will bless you. Because he said, if we would speak the word, the word blessing, that he gave us to speak, that he would put his name upon you, and that he would bless you. Now be expecting something to happen. Watch your word. Okay, now just watch your words. What you got to do is watch your words and let the blessing flow. Amen. 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 And your tithe and offering goes back in the basket right there after this next after this song. Hallelujah, if you'd like to join us in Santa.